turn to the gospel for today, Mark chapter 12, verses 38 through 44. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, and she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all that she had to live on. Dear God, we pray for your blessings on this word today. Help us to find the meaning and to understand what it is you want us to know. Empower us to be your disciples, so give us courage and strength to live out your will. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, for the Sunday before Thanksgiving, we usually talk about what we have to be thankful for. We count our blessings. We count all the good things that we have or have happened to us. The message from this approach is that we all have many good possessions and so many good things have happened to us that uh, we should be grateful for what we have. Thanksgiving should be a time for giving thanks for, for all that we have. It's good that we do this exercise once a year, but it is really an exercise that we should be doing every day. Even at Thanksgiving time, we avoid thinking about being grateful by overfilling ourselves with food, arguing with family members, watching football and falling asleep, or cleaning up the kitchen and then collapsing. We do not leave much time, if any, for self-reflection about how we have been blessed. So why is it so important for us to reflect upon our blessings and experience gratitude? Reflecting on our blessings, on the good things that we have, moves most people to have a sensation of gratitude. And gratitude or thankfulness is a positive spiritual experience, as well as being good for our physical health also. Being thankful promotes the strength and growth of our spirits, and it also produces good chemical reactions in our brains. Being grateful fosters our energy to live, to be positive, to be creative, and to be constructive. Being thankful is not just a nice thing to do. It also promotes good physical and spiritual health. Now, on the other hand, to lack a sense of gratitude or thankfulness uh, is to stunt our spirit's growth and to weaken our souls. Being poor in gratitude means to lose energy to live well. And we tend to be negative, we tend to be critical and destructive about ourselves and other people. Lacking an attitude of being thankful or an attitude of gratitude in our character takes spiritual energy away from us and drains our life energy. And we do not get all those good chemical reactions in our brains either. But for us to develop an attitude of gratitude or thankfulness, we have to overcome some strong tendencies in our own psychological makeup. Most of us are predisposed to look at what we do not have rather than what we have. We focus on what we want to get. We focus on what we lack. Economists call this scarcity. Scarcity means that the glass is always half empty. Scarcity means that most of us look at life as though there is not enough stuff to go around for everyone. So if you want something, well then you either need to get there first or you need to take it away from someone else and keep it for yourself. 
Most of us are afraid that there's not enough resources to meet everyone's needs. Or we believe there is enough stuff to go around, but it doesn't get distributed equally. Some people hoard or take more than their fair share, which causes other people to hoard and take more for themselves. Of course, we are not really worried that anyone will get what they need. We're, we're more worried about us not getting what we need. So there are many sayings which either directly or indirectly express this attitude that there's not enough in the world to go around. And you all heard such sayings as, uh, well, you have to look out for number one. Uh, take it before someone else does. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Uh, the early bird gets the worm. He who hesitates is lost. If you don't stand up for yourself, no one else will. And many others. These sayings express that we are all in competition for the things we need to survive. For most of human existence on Earth, these sayings were partly or entirely true. Many of our prehistoric ancestors were in competition for other people with limited resources. Our prehistoric group had to get the food we needed before the other group got that food. This is where our tribalism comes in. Human beings are very tribal. Tribal means that we identify with one group of people, you know, our tribe, over another group of people, or tribe. We humans have a strong identification and loyalty to a certain group of people. Almost always that identification is against another group of people. Our sports are filled with tribalism. For most of us, our tribe is Michigan State, but we have a few here whose tribe is Michigan. We hope the team we identify with, you know, our people, will win, and the other people, not our people, will lose. We root for the Lions, we insult the opposing team. We cheer for one, we boo for the other because one is our tribe and the other one is the opposing tribe or team. Our tribe has to fight the other tribe to get what we need. It's still deep in our DNA. Without this tribal instinct, our sports would be entirely different from what they are. This is something to think about when we are cheering for our favorite team on Thanksgiving Day or any other day. But, okay, all of this is to say that we look at the world as a place where there is not enough and we have to struggle to get what we need. We have ritualized the struggle and our sports is one of the most prominent places of this ritualized struggle and sometimes violence. Human beings are predisposed to think of what we lack rather than what we have. That's why we find it so easy to criticize someone but find it hard to compliment them. One of the worst things for a worker is when they uh, go to their boss and ask how they're doing, the boss replies, oh, don't worry, if you're not doing things right, we'll tell you. We will let you know, yeah. But as most of you know, it's hard to work when you do not receive any kind of positive feedback from those that you are working for. Well, consider this. Consider this. Being thankful or grateful is like giving God a compliment or, or positive feedback. Expressing thanks is what you have received in what you have received is like saying to God that you appreciate the job that God has been doing to provide for you. Of course, we know that God is the boss. We're not the boss. God doesn't work for us, although there are many people who act like God does. No, we work for God, we are God's servants. But still, we need to ask ourselves, are we grateful servants or disgruntled workers? We, we hope we all can learn to be grateful servants of God who appreciate what we have and frequently say thank you to God or tell God, God, you're doing a good job. Thank you. I think God likes to have some positive feedback too. So let's remember to give God some thanks and praise. Now, when things are going well for us, being grateful and thankful is easy to do, right? 
Having an attitude of gratitude is a whole lot harder when we experience bad times and hardships. We may wonder at the Apostle Paul's words from his letter to the Philippians when he writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. There are times in our lives when bad things happen. We become ill or injured. We lose a job. We lose large amounts of our savings. We lose a friend. We lose someone we love and more. All of these tragedies, which can break our hearts and sometimes our spirits as well, and, and most of us would not think of rejoicing or thanking God at such times. The usual reaction I hear most of the time to such circumstances is, what did I do to deserve this? Or why is God punishing me? How can we rejoice and give thanks when we suffer affliction and oppressive circumstances? All right. There was this movie released in 1999 called American Beauty. It was about a dysfunctional suburban American family. The main character, Lester Burnham, is going through a midlife crisis. He quits his upscale job to work in a fast food restaurant. He's going through a divorce with his wife who is having an affair. Uh, their daughter hates both of their parents. The retired Marine colonel who lives next door thinks Lester is having an affair with his son. And there is more, but I think that's enough to tell you that Lester Burnham's life is a mess and has been a mess for many years. Near the end of the movie, Lester sitting alone at the kitchen table in his home looking at a photograph of his family. And then you see a gun approaching his head from behind him and the gun goes off. You see blood splatter on the kitchen wall. So you know he's, he's dead. But in a voiceover, Lester speaks to the audience and says that his last thought before he died was how grateful he was. He was not grateful for dying to escape the mess of his life, but rather he is grateful for having been alive even though his life's been a mess. That line really impressed me because it was not what I expected at all. I could not see anything in his life that I would rejoice or give thanks for. But it got me to thinking about how, being grateful even though we experience hard times, tragedies, trials, tribulations. We have all kinds of experiences in life, good, bad, and indifferent. Our experiences in life can change from pleasant to unpleasant, but fundamental to all our different experiences is life itself. The bedrock of our existence is, what, is that we are alive. The bottom line is that life is a gift. Life is a gift from God to us. And most often, life is what we make of that gift from God. And what happens to us are the consequences of what we have made of God's gift to us. And we may count our blessings on Thanksgiving, be grateful for all the good things we have and all the good things that have happened to us. That's good. But every day should be a thanksgiving to God for the gift of life in all of its various forms and experiences. I am reminded of a line from a song entitled, Try to Remember. It's a song about a person remembering when he was young but all the, partic the particular line I'm referring to is, deep in December, it's nice to remember, without the hurt, the heart is hollow. Without the hurt, the heart is hollow. Many years ago when I heard that line, I had a, it had a profound impact on me. I became aware that it is often the bad experiences in life, the hurt, the sorrow, the pain, which makes us appreciate the good times. As the song says, hurt and pain hollow out a place in our hearts which can be filled with joy and happiness. It is our experience of the unpleasant which allows us the ability to enjoy and rejoice in the pleasant experiences of life. 
I also realize that the hurt and pain I have suffered can allow me to appreciate another person's suffering and be more helpful to them in dealing with their suffering. So I thank God for the gift of life in all of its various forms. I do not seek out pain or hurt, but when it does come, I hope to use those experiences to help others to find the good that is in them, and to live that as opposed to the bad. And the Apostle Paul said something in Philippians 4 that is relevant that Ted read earlier. So let me read it to you again. He wrote, I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In, all the, in any circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty, and of being in need. And I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Paul knew how to rejoice and give thanks no matter what his external circumstances were. And I hope we all can come to that appreciation about God's gift of life to us and to always be thankful. <laughs>